Hello and welcome to How to Stay Married So Far. And we think this is like episode 105, 106. Mm. And yet we have never discussed what marriage is. Why marriage and not something else? Why do we get married? Yeah. And the only reason that we even thought about this is just an article that I saw yesterday, which is an old article, actually, uh, an interview with Sarah Lancashire. And I thought, well, how perfect, because everybody's talking about Sarah Lancashire at the moment because of the brilliance of Happy Valley. Um, but we don't, we know so little about her because she's always... Very private. Yeah, she's always just made a thing of this, that she's very private. Maybe it's something to do... I mean, we know that she... I think she was diagnosed with clinical depression at, like, 18, 19. Mm. So we know that, and maybe that's plays a part in her being quite mm. very private and protective of her of her private life. Mm-hmm. So this was quite a surprise to see this article. Mm. And she was talking about her first marriage. And she said... I got married for all the wrong reasons. I got married only because I was pregnant, which for somebody who's very private, it's a huge thing to say. Mm. Um, she said, I was a very traditional girl and was horrified at the thought of having a child out of wedlock. She also said she was married for 10 years and that was 10 years too long. It was actually a quote back from her first husband. who was mm. perfectly horrified that she'd said, said any of this. Maybe it was after that she decided it's I'm not going to say anything. It's quite damning though. It? Yeah, you? it is very mm. damning. But then she's been very happily married since to Peter Salmon, head of the BBC it for years, be, yeah. for he years, not that, anymore. Yeah. Um, and he offered this... me my first job at BBC One. Did he? Mm. He tried to get me to do the one show. He was the one that tried to convince me to do the one show. Anyway, this was the this was the piece of the article that made me think. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what we would think of this if we broke this down a little, this paragraph. So, she said, I have a desire, a need to feel owned. Not physically or mentally owned. I want to be spiritually owned. I want to belong to somebody. Marriage is a pact, a conspiracy of ownership. And I want that. I mean... Bloody that's hell. that's a smorgasbord of delights. Really there, is. isn't it? Yeah, Do you want yeah. to take that over and have a look? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, guys, if you're listening on podcast, you won't see that we are now moving our computer. Also, you won't us. see that I've got incredibly purple lips from eating a strange bircher. Blueberry bircher. Mm. Um, and if you'd like to see us, you can watch this podcast over on our YouTube channel, The Swala Adelies. So let's break down this paragraph. Well... I'm going to talk briefly about what I always thought marriage was uh, in the past. I, I had a strange situation where, well, both of our parents were married. And the reason that was unusual for me was my mum led such a sort of bohemian, um, I would say promiscuous, um, I would say adventurous, uh, liberal, impulsive. hippie, impulsive, compulsive sort of life. And so it, was, it struck me as bizarre when about the age of 12, we were all in the classroom and someone said in the class, are your parents married? And when you were born, and I was the only one in the class to say yes. So I was the only, you know, and so we all started chatting about, oh, you're not a bastard and all this kind of stuff. And it struck me as strange that my mum had been married because everything about her screamed no to marriage, you know, it was a sort of instant. And you hadn't grown up with your dad, no, of course, no, exactly. at all. No, so I had no comprehension of a married couple. But when I was younger, I, I, I think marriage for me was something so in the abstract. It, mm. it, it seemed such an alien prospect. It was something that even as I got into my 20s and 30s, early 30s, I never necessarily thought was going to happen. Um, well, I remember when we decided to get married, we were both so pissed. Do you remember? Yeah, we can't remember who asked who. I, I know, I know where it yes. happened. Where? Pizza Express. Oh, God. That one, one on the, the way up to Prince Waterloo. To. Oh my God, I've just realised something. What? We always end up on our dates in Pizza Express. Oh, yeah, eating, oh don't, now I want that bloody... That's oh, why, because that's pizza. where we decided we were going to get pre- pregnant. <laughs> no, you were pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we decided we were going to get... When, when you think about it now, and we now know both of us have ADHD, my God, what an impulsive decision that was, mm. wasn't it? 
Um, but I remember you saying lots in the run up to us getting married, and when I, and in fact when we got married, you kept saying, "But I never thought I would get. I mm. didn't think I was going to get married. Not in a way that you hadn't wanted to, but mm. almost like you never thought you were going to have that." Mm. And the only time I'd ever toyed with marriage was when I, because of a, a misdemeanor, a dalliance, I asked to marry someone as a kind of attempt to kind of build bridges, band-aid the situation. She said no. And and so consequently, I must have in some way thought that marriage was somehow something that could solve something mm, or suggest that you something. fix something. Glue or committed, something. You know, mm. yeah, many more analogies that mean <laughs> you put things together the next day. No, I'm still laughing at your misdemeanor, misdemeanor <laughs> dalliance. Why don't you just say you're unfaithful? Well, yeah, I was unfaithful. Otherwise, somebody will pull you up for it in the comments below. <laughs> no, right. I was unfaithful. And, and, then, and so I used it in a really, you know, insincere fashion. I, mm. I used it as something to try and make amends, mm. to solidify something, to rescue something. We'd had, mm. we had a kid and, you know, I, I was like, oh God, you know, I don't want, I wasn't ashamed about it. I mean, she was married out, of, uh, she was born with us out of wedlock, but I don't know. It, for me, it just felt like something that I could use to solve a situation. But I don't think, I don't think with malice, mm. I think from what I know about that time, mm. I think you were in blind panic. Yeah, I was. Because really in your heart of hearts, you knew that relationship was over. Yeah. But you didn't know how to do mm. that really because you had so much love for your I child. I proposed at the top of Notre Dame and when she said no, I felt distinctly... I thought it was the Eiffel Tower. No, I felt distinctly oh. like Quasimodo. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was very, very smart to say very no. Very smart. Because... I'm sorry, I don't know why I said it like that. No, but she was, because I think that's really important and really yeah. brave and honest thing to say. Yeah. It's like when people have babies because they're in a panic of a relationship mm. ending, so mm. it, it will never glue something together. And okay, this is not quite what she's talking about, but I do think it's interesting how marriage can be something that's quite sort of functional. I mean, another thing that happens with marriage... And a thought that I often had around marriage was that my nan was always hopeful that I would get married at some point, and I was mindful of that. But I, I, I suppose. What was a... your perception of why your nan wanted you to get married? Well, because... Was it because she felt you'd be looked after? That yeah, be... she felt that there would be a settled downness, you know, up and. Well, as my life went on, I mean, my granddad said to her, God, Belle, I can't cope with the number of relationships he's moving through. Mm. So I think there was just. It Chaos. was born of a hope that things would calm down, mm. settle down, all that kind of stuff. And to that extent, maybe that's true. And I, I'm pretty certain that a lot of people, comment below, have got married for other people, you know, whether it be for their children, for their yeah. parents, for the sense within their family. For the society norm. Society yeah, norm, the exactly. demands exactly. of like peer pressure, yeah. everybody else is getting married. Yeah. But this line that she says, I have a desire and need to feel owned. I mean, that flies against almost every conceivable, conceivably conventional feminist thought. That's why I really love this, this mm. paragraph, what does she this mean? very short paragraph. Because are we, as feminists or, you know, as contemporary people, are we denying... A something a primal, a visceral mm. need, is she more feminist because she can recognise it no, and no. she can say it because it doesn't demean anything else mm. about her and doesn't stop her doing whatever she wants? Mm. Because I would agree with that. I would actually, if I, I, I couldn't have when I was younger because everything is about, you know, proving yourself to just be totally fine on your own, mm. isn't it? And... Yeah, you pick and choose whether you want somebody, you don't need anybody and all this stuff. Um, but when I think about after we got married, just after we got married, and a real, real... It was a strange thing for me, actually, our honeymoon, because I don't think at that point I realised how unhappy you were. Mm. Not with me, but you were very unhappy. You know, mm. you had an undiagnosed shit going down for you mm. you know I think we were both well I was certainly an alcoholic period you you were an alcoholic we didn't know that we didn't know any of this we didn't know any of this 
But I remember feeling really joyful after we got married, which didn't really sit right with me. It was weird. I felt really joyful. I felt really, yeah, I did really feel a sense of belonging that I had never felt in that way before. That's our washing machine. That's the washing machine on my stomach. And, and I remember pulling back on that because I didn't quite feel it from you. Yeah. I felt like a sadness, but knowing you so well now, I know that would have just been the highs and lows of your... Well, no, if I'm honest, I think your... I'd probably say I was a bit intimidated by the whole prospect in oh, my right. own way. I mean, I think intimidated by the prospect that something so conven- conventional mm. was about to happen to us. No, I'm I mean, talking about on the, on the honeymoon, it had happened. No, 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 no I know. But oh, but the it, future. The, the fact right. that it had yeah, happened, yeah. the fact that married, married life, life was now, I was yeah. now in it. I mean, you know, it's a little bit like the moment when dads and parents have kids. They're obviously, they're desperately excited. It's the most important thing in their lives. But there's also a moment that's of fear, fear mm. and, on, and I suppose that's responsibility. Mm. And there's responsibility in a marriage. Suddenly, you, you know, for me especially, I was thinking... Mm, I'm coming straight out of a very chaotic approach to things. And just the word marriage screams, sort your shit out, grow well, up, yeah. grow up, be... Especially as I was pregnant. We were never that tight to have a grown-up conversation. No. I don't we... think we ever had a conversation well, we about didn't... how we were going to do things, did we? No, we just ran at it. We just ran at it. We also it. ran at it separately still, even when we were married. I was in Bristol, you were here, and, and it was... And, well, you were sort of everywhere. And there was still that sense of two people colliding. I mean, although we'd got yeah. married... We're having a car crash, we actually. We were still... More than colliding, yeah, we were car crashing. Yeah, we were kind of in the, in the verge and on the whole hard shoulder with punctures everywhere, kind of rattling along. And so, I mean, yeah, I didn't know... But I was did, there I any did... sense at that point, to go back to her point, of feeling now a sense of ownership without, obviously, any sense of coercive control mm-hmm. or anything like that, but just ownership that there is something because what I hear when I hear ownership I hear a responsibility to another person Mm. Mm. you know a commitment to another person and they commit to you and you commit to them and there is a kind of ownership of each other's futures Mm. in a way that's Mm. what I interpret that to mean and to belong to somebody is I think it's really hard for a man to kind of talk about these things in terms of ownership because I think for the vast majority of men it is about ownership and this isn't gross generalization. What do you mean for you to feel like you're owned? Well, because of my upbringing. I think I've, you know, being brought up in such a sort of radical feminist environment, it was, I mean, I could have gone one of two ways. I could have gone to the place of being totally kind of corrosive and, you know, every relationship I had was, was, you know, deeply controlled and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that there has been that element in me born of fear of abandonment, but the idea of owning a woman would be absolutely anathema to everything that had been talked about, the sense of things when I was young, yeah. the sense of growing up. And yet at the same time, I think both sides of a couple getting married feel a moment of comfort that that person has said it's just you. Because if you're in an equal marriage, Mm. then let's just take it that it's not, we're not coming from it from a radical feminist Mm. point of view or whatever. We're just coming from it as like an equal marriage Mm. and an equal sense of ownership either way. We we do, we all rile against that. Mm. But when she says it's a spiritual thing, it's not the nuts and bolts of life. I own you, you do this, you do that, you do as Mm. I say. Of course, that would be absolutely abhorrent. But I want to belong to somebody. Yeah. That's a big I was thing, like, I was like saying I want to be needed. I, why, many, many people would say that's complete ick and completely disgusting. What, to belong to someone? To have a need to belong to someone, a need for somebody else to need but you. But this goes back to that thing that you've, we've often said, which is, and I, I feel the same thing about cultural differences. On the one hand, we're encouraged not to see difference. I understand that. All, everyone is equal, regardless of cultural background, religion, skin colour, whatever. And then at the same time, we champion the differences because there are so many rich cultural differences. So there are things that you can identify about different religions, different cultures, different communities, and people of colour that have come from a different background to 
say, white people. And those things, I mean, a classic example is Europe. You know, on the one hand, my problem with the EU in the past was, why do we want to streamline us all into being European? We've got the Italians, we've got the Spanish, we've got the French. They've all got completely different sort of cultures and approaches to things. And that's it, rich. That's an enriching thing. I feel the same thing sometimes about gender and the idea that we're all, we've almost gone the other way to the point that to feel something like Sarah Lancashire's saying here, which is about feeling ownership, it's like it's stepping towards the conventions that we've run right. away from, which is there's a femininity perhaps in this, though she isn't actually saying that. But, you know, for a woman to say this, lots of people go, that's mm. what are you doing? You're sacrificing yourself. Where's your self-esteem? And for a man Where's to say it, he'd be needy and he'd be, he'd yeah. be. So that, but that's, that's the point that I'm making. Is she just talking about the, just something that transcends all of this stuff that mm. we're supposed to feel. And she's just saying, this is, you know, my spirit needs this. Yeah. And, and also, I would imagine that most people would rush and condemn that as her being broken. But nowhere is she saying she needs to be fixed by that. Mm. It's just something that she's always wanted. I think, I think it's quite an empowered thing, she says, mm. when, you look beneath, when you look beneath it. First and foremost, oh, my God, she wants to belong. Oh, my God, she wants to be owned. Oh, my God, what, what, what is all this? Mm. <laughs> We're upside down. But, look, but it also goes back to that thing where, you know, jealousy and ownership. I mean, I, everyone I can think of in a relationship, myself, you, every, everyone in every relationship, there is an aspect of that relationship where both parts of the relationship want reassurances and evidence that they are the one for that person. And sometimes in seeking those reassurances and that evidence and having it, you know, sort of demonstrated in a clear way, we all, it's the nature of love and it's the nature of a relationship, we all need to almost get that from people yeah. and perhaps massage the situation or ask in a needy way or feel jealous. Or well, I don't feel, think feel, all, but I well, think no, no, a lot. I think the vast I think majority, of, what I'm trying to say is, in love, there is manipulation. It's inherent, it's, it's inherent in love, and I think mm. ownership is in there. And I think we're programmed to kind of run away from that word because it means that you've surrendered yourself and da 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 da. Mm. And actually, I think what she's talking about goes to the heart of that because I think ownership has become a dirty word. I think she's talking about spiritual ownership. So she's absolutely saying, you know, I'm free to do what I want. I've got my own financial employment, da 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 da, mm. freedom and all that kind of stuff. Professional freedom, physical freedom, mental freedom. She's not enslaved. But we have we moved too far away I, from I, what I, it possibly. is to be human. Mm. Maybe this isn't anything about gender. Maybe this is just to be human. Exactly. There is a need. Yeah. I mean, my God, we saw that in the pandemic, didn't we? Just how brutal it was for people to be kept away from other people. Yeah. And, and you know, at our very, very base... Well, it's like I always say, isn't it? On the day you die, it's like, who did you love and how were you loved back? It just goes back to that, really. Yeah, yeah. That, that to me, is the essence of, a hu of, hum of being a human. But I think marriage, you know, why do we get married goes back to why do we fall in love? And I think we fall in love because we are looking, as much as we're looking to share in something and enjoy someone else, we're also looking to fix something in ourselves. We, you know, it's two bits of a very jagged jigsaw puzzle. And what happens is those jagged edges become enmeshed. Ah, but you see, in the land of therapy, in the land of... You shouldn't ever be with somebody to fix. I agree. But I, but but I think that's like a perfect... I agree. You know, that's, that's, that, that, that's the perfect template. But, but, but how many people really go into a relationship totally fixed? But can I also say that the perfect it's template ridiculous. of a relationship I find the most boring fuckers on the <laughs> I mean, because, you know, the interest in a relationship, as our homeopath, who's a great friend, says... The fact that there's fire, the fact that there's, you know, and obviously we're talking relatively, we're not talking about smashing things up and going nuts, no. but, but we, you know, fire in a relationship is a good thing. That's, that's, that's the dog Nadia now. So that the washing machine and now the dog. Um, and, but I, 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 you know, I'm interested in this idea of, of the, I've always been interested in the idea that within love, part within love is a sort of very selfish need for something for yourself. And that's not a bad thing. Hmm. It's just a fact. And I think marriage becomes something that's almost like taking out an insurance policy hmm. to kind of almost put, and obviously it doesn't always succeed, hmm. obviously, but it, you're trying to put a slight sort of almost the shell of, an, of a nut 
around you. You're trying mm, to protect protection. it with a, a bit of armour. Yeah. And that bit of armour may be strong, it may not be strong, it may be, you know, it may be sort of foolish and churlish or whatever it might be. You might be It's devoted. funny, isn't it? Because you could you could own a house together, you mm. could own a business together, you could own you well, could have human life together, well, children. We do. But no, but to society still, the marriage bit mm. is the real commitment. Mm. And that fascinates me. Are... Because it's harder to get out of a, a business or, or or a mortgage together, mm. actually, than it is probably to just to get a simple divorce well, if you both agree to it. It's very easy to get a divorce yeah. now. And yet, I'd be fascinated to know about those people who don't get married or stay together and aren't married and have a family and have da da da. Or those people, I've always been fascinated by people who stay together for many years and then get married. It's like, well, what's... And so what? often it then goes wrong. Well, that's a gross generalisation. No, but often. I didn't say all, I said often. And do you think that's because... Yeah, but that's interesting. Do you think that's perhaps because at the point they've got used to a relationship mm. that do, even though there's ownership issues within it, of course, the fact that you've got married parks this really artificial sense of pressure on you to be mm, something. Maybe something. And suddenly you can't live up to this thing. That's why that I love that we got married really quickly off, soon after knowing each other. Mm. Because we didn't really know what the hell we were doing, so there was no expectations. No. And I think... But isn't it, here's I, an interesting one. If our daughters, any of our daughters came to us and said they wanted to get married at a young age, I, I would quite quickly go, oh, I don't know if this is right. I don't know if you need to make that level of a commitment. Obviously, if they really wanted to, I'd support them. Mm. But my, I'd be more my likely first to say emotional that. response mm. would be one of caution and concern. I'd be more likely to say that if they said I want to get a mortgage with someone. I, I see that. Yeah, I see that as very binding. This generation don't need to worry about mortgages. Yeah. So what was the next bit she said? Uh, she says, marriage is a pact, a conspiracy of ownership. That's a, that's a very sorry... Conspiracy so con is yeah. like a secret that's, kind that's of, so sort of surreptitious interesting, plot. That. The conspiracy between the two of you or a conspiracy with yourself that you're not admitting to the other person that you want some sort of ownership, that you want a guarantee, that you want you want uh, an insurance that it is really just you that they want and they're never going to think about anybody else. Because that's what marriage means. This one paragraph is one of the most <laughs> remarkable observations about marriage I think I've ever read. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? Marriage is a conspiracy of ownership. But what she's saying, because we often get, we often say this thing, don't we? A conspiracy of silence around things like pregnancy and what have you. Everyone kind of knows it's going to be fucking, oh, could be, oh, but everyone doesn't, no one says anything because of course, what's the point? You've got to go through it and all that kind of stuff. So I think what she is saying there is, you know, a little bit what we're saying or what I'm saying, which is drill down to the very essence of it. And it is about ownership. It is about saying mm. it's just you and it's just me mm. and I have a right to And that's to why just so you. many people are so frightened of that because they just can't. And that's why I think certain relationships or marriages fall apart because I think there's the romantic, idealised sense of what it might be, but actually some people are really, quite rightly so, frightened by what that ownership actually means and the extent to it. I mean, a little bit like, I mean, a, a funny little, we were going to do a whole How to Stay Married about it and... Um, and even Maddie said we should do it at one point, was around your wedding rings. And I think the comment that Nadia hasn't worn her wedding rings for a long time. It was born of eczema and issues with her hands. But it had got to a point where I felt it had gone on for such a long time. And every now and then I'd drop a hint going, you know, your wedding rings are in that pot on the shelf. And it's such a superficial token of marriage because everything about the way you are with me, about our relationship, far supersedes a ring on the finger. And yet it was really important to me in a way that it, you said it wouldn't be important to you at all. Is that about ownership? Yeah. All right, okay, there you go. Totally. No. Because it, 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 it did annoy me. It started to annoy me. But it the annoyed way you, me. The way you were saying it started to annoy me. And I think I said to you one day, what about all that I do? What about the way that I'm always here? What about What's I about? would never... No, no, but I that's... Mm. You've only said that now because that's what I said to you in, mm. in answer to it. Mm. But that's how I was left feeling when you kept saying, well, where is your ring? It was like, it did start to feel a bit like branding almost of ownership. But then what is the point of a wedding ring? 
The, there's no point to the wedding ring. The wedding, there's a point to the marriage, but, but, the, but the wedding ring doesn't hold the marriage No, no, me. no, but I think distilled down into the wedding ring, the wedding ring itself, the very concept of a wedding ring goes mm. to the heart of this conspiracy of ownership. But that's why I've put it back on, because for you, like, I have no interest and never have in any possessions. Mm. I just, like, if we moved into a flat and we didn't have anything in here, that'd be fine. As long as we had our photographs and stuff. I'm not, I'm not into things, mm. things, material things. And, you know, this isn't an expensive ring. You're not talking about money, but you just, things don't hold stuff for me. Like, you will really, really panic if you lost something. Mm. Whereas I would go, hmm, well, I lost it. I wonder why, I, mm, well, I've lost it. So that's just a big difference in, in us. So I, though I got annoyed with you, I then had to think, well, no, I can see this actually does mean a lot to him. So as soon as my things have gone down enough, I will put them back on. Mm. But I put them back on because it signifies something to you, not because it signifies something to me. You see, whereas I have a wedding ring and I've plopped on the top of it another ring that says forever. Yeah. So, you know. And who bought you that ring? You it did. says forever. Exactly. So you were saying it to me. Yeah. And now I'm saying it back to you. <laughs> and then on the other hand, it says... Fuck them all. <laughs> um, and then she says, at the end of this, she says, a conspiracy of ownership, and I want that. I think that's really empowering. I want that ownership. Well, I... because you, because what she's saying is, I don't give a shit what society now tells <laughs> I me. I do like Sarah. She doesn't about, give a shit about it. I mean, you know, we don't know any of this. We no, could be completely wrong, no. you know. But, but it, what it feels like is she's saying, and I've had to do this a number of times on Loose Women. I've had to say... When I've said, oh, I like to cook for more, I like to, and everyone looks at me like, you know, but it's like, nobody can tell me I'm not a feminist. Mm. I am a feminist, and I am a feminist because I do what I want in everything. Mm. If I want to iron your underpants, of course I don't, but if I wanted to, I would iron your underpants, and I wouldn't feel in any way mm. that I'd let down the sisterhood. Um, and I think sometimes, from what does feminism mean? Feminism means to me that I do what I choose to do, mm. but I also will take into account the people that I love. I'm not just going to do just what I want to do with no but accountability. I, but I do think we're getting to... But what's interesting is I think it's all right and it's permissible and it's, like you just said, there's a strong argument to say, it's all right for me to be feminine. It's all right for me to... And what I mean, I don't mean feminine, because there is no inherent feminine. You see, you've got... It, it's well, a now you've got your bit. snickers no, in a no, right no, old no, twist. No, I'm going to sit and watch My this. knickers have been in a twist since <laughs> I was about six. And unfortunately, when I was six, I was probably wearing knickers. Um, the issue, No, so I'm trying to tread carefully around this. Those things that you can do as a woman in a heterosexual or, or, or gay relationship that society deems to be feminine, mm. often domesticated and all that kind of stuff. If a woman says it's my, I understand what you're saying, it's my right to do those things, it's me actually enacting my mm. feminist right to do some of those, none of those, or all of those. Hang on. If a man says something equivalent about masculine qualities, mm. I'm not suggesting for a minute, you know, the power balance has mm. completely shifted, Problems start to come in. Mm. Because what do you think those might be then? Well, because I think they're things like major bread earner, um, you know, uh, you know, DIY, um, doing, uh, doing the really... Taking the rubbish Doing out. the really unromantic things like, well, driving everywhere. What, like when women do the really unromantic to, thing, like yeah, yeah, cleaning yeah. the toilet. Yeah, but also I think, you know, being emotionally non-communicative, handing over all the complex kind of emotional issues to someone else. I mean, I'm washing their hands. I respect the emotional complexity that, and the chats that you have with the girls. I'd like to be more involved in it, but I respect that they don't want, not don't want to, but they feel more comfortable about certain things and so do you. But a lot of men, it's their deemed thing that they won't go near that stuff. And that's a masculine sort of quality. Um, going out every night and not being answerable for going out because they worked hard and they want to go and have pints and do all this kind of stuff without being answerable to a family. I think there are lots of examples of... Ma but, you know, masculine qualities that are potentially quite good. You know, being, being there to strongly support your children if a conflict's happening or something like that, making it blindingly obvious that actually I don't want to get involved in the nuance of this emotional complexity. It's pretty damn simple and that person needs to fuck off. Mm. And I'm going to say that, you know, sometimes providing just those. Why are most things that are considered masculine... Considered macho. Considered macho or wrong? Or, I, think, or... I, think, I think across the board, I think a lot... We are all tied up in knots. Mm. 
Mm. Because there is so much... It's just everything has to be one thing or the other. Yeah, and this is what frustrates me so much, no matter what we're talking about. Why can't we be all these different things? And mm. sometimes failing and sometimes succeeding. And, and yeah, I think that there's enormous pressure on what an equal marriage is. Mm. And I think sometimes that gets in the way of people having maybe a happier marriage than they could have. It's curious, isn't it, that we live in a time and an age, rightly so, where, is it heteronorma, heteronorma, heteronormality, is it? Where we're encouraged to embrace, rightly so, the broad spectrum of gender fluidity and identity and all this kind of stuff. And yet when you come to the qualities of femininity and the qualities of masculinity, it's, it's still pretty rigid. So rigid. And there's still judgment. For our, if for you, our generation. There's still judgment. Very, if you very stay rigid. Your... Not for the not for the generations coming up behind us, but we are we yeah. Are we there's the ones so tied much up in judgment. Knots, do you think? Yeah, I think we well, everyone's tied up in knots for different yeah. reasons, but I think there is a lot of judgment. Um I certainly you know, I mean, like you know, I'm flirty and I like because I like to make people feel comfortable. We've had this conversation before, haven't we? My flirtatiousness is friendliness. Mm. But there are a lot of women that would say to me, why are you doing that? Why are you being, you know, why are you using your feminine wiles or whatever? Mm. I can't separate that. Mm. I can't separate it from myself. You know, it's like we were having this conversation earlier, weren't we? Like, I can't separate my ADHD brain and my brain. It's just mm. my brain. It's just my personality. It's just like, I didn't sit here and go, okay, I'm going to use my feminine wiles. I'm just... I'm just communicating in the way that I always have. Mm. And you can find yourself stepping on yourself. Mm. And you just you just have to take a moment. Actually, I'm okay with how I am. Mm. I'm not harming anybody. I'm just fine with the way that I am. There we go. I mean, wouldn't it be hilarious if Sarah Lancashire listened to this and went, that's not what I meant. <laughs> well, from what I, mean, I hear about opposite. Sarah Lancashire, I think she'd absolutely say, what a load of old trolley. Yeah, <laughs> she's, her, she's actually the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, I mean, it's a really interesting paragraph. It really I don't is. know if we made any sense whatsoever. More, I don't think I'm we did. I'm more confused at the end than I was at the beginning, I think. But I, I okay, go back, let's okay, boil it down. My final mm. point is, I go back to the heart of it. I think you cannot, in a, in a month of Sundays, say that ownership isn't at the heart of any long-term commitment to each other, whether it be married or yeah. not. But of course, taking away all the negative, the negativity around ownership, mm. control and all mm. those things. We do have ownership of each other's future, present, past, mm. happiness. We do have a certain ownership. I, mm. I think it's like a responsibility to somebody else. I think maybe that's more the word. I like mm. to be held responsible and accountable mm. to another human being and vice versa. Yeah. So maybe maybe that's a better way of thinking. And on the conspiracy of ownership, yeah, that's, a, that's one I'm going to keep mulling over. Is a conspiracy between the two of us against I, no, the world? No, I think the conspiracy is, conspiracy is in all, all, all married relationships. All married, it was a conspiracy. Like the conspiracy, for me there's an equivalence between it and the conspiracy of silence around pregnancy. It's an unspoken about mm. conspiracy amongst women. And what I think what she's suggesting, it's an unspoken cons conspiracy, conspiracy amongst everyone who's married. married. Even if you're not, you know, conscious of it, mm. it's, it's what defines marriage. So, listener and viewer, Flipping honest to goodness, we don't know what the hell we've just said. No, we don't so know what we've. We don't know about. what we've talked about, but we would just love to know what what do you think we talked <laughs> yeah, about, tell us, tell and, us what and what do you about. think about this little paragraph from Sarah Lancashire? I've just looked at Chi-Chi and I've just suddenly thought I want to be her. Yeah, it yeah. seems like a much easier place yeah. to be. 